welcome everybody. Thank you. Thank you for pivoting so quickly onto this new Zoom. It's our first workshop of the semester, so we're kind of working out the kinks. So thank you very much for being so patient. Um, this workshop, it is, everyone's been wanting to come to this workshop. It's highly sought out for. So this workshop, it focuses on the academic requirements of a child development permit and what steps are required for the permit application process. And we'll cover the uh, academic qualifications and different routes to qualify. So Monica Robinson, uh, she is our credential analyst at the San Diego County Office of Education. Uh, one of her main jobs is to educate, train, and present to school district partners and local employing uh, agencies um, in credentialing to meet the CTC and CDE requirements. So she's very knowledgeable. Um, we're so glad to have her here. So without further ado, Monica Robinson. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. So you are at the Child Development Permit Workshop today. And um, thank you for having me uh, to the Community College World and Donna um, to educate our future uh, teachers and, and uh, leaders here. So without further ado, we're going to start um, to allow time and to respect everybody's time. I may be going through the PowerPoint a little bit fast to cover uh, stuff so that we can have a Q&A uh, at the end of the presentation. And um, just for my purposes, do you guys put questions in a chat and or how does that work? Yes, we'll go ahead and um, get the initial um, uh, questions on the chat. So if people want to go ahead and 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 um, do that, we will monitor it and um, let you know. Thank you. Um, thanks, Monica. Perfect. Okay, so we'll take care of that at the end. All righty, so child development permit types, there's uh, a few different levels and we are gonna talk about all of them today from the highest to the lowest permit. Um, the, the highest being the program director permit, uh, site supervisor permit is the uh, next level down from that, master teacher, teacher, associate teacher permit and the assistant permit. Um, if there's somebody in the child development uh, employment arena that is asking about an aid, they are not required to hold a permit. We do get that question. Uh, it gets confused with the assistant permit, but we just wanted to throw that in there um, because we do get that question. So this here is pretty much um, what everyone wants to know as far as what these permits authorize. So we'll get a person saying, you know, I'm an associate teacher, what can I do? Or if I qualify for site supervisor, what can I do? So this is a handy dandy little um, cheat sheet per se. Um, if you look at the different levels and you see the green check mark, that will tell you that the permit holder is authorized to do those particular services uh, within their permit level. So as an example, if we go down to assistant teacher, which is the lowest permit, you'll see that that individual uh, is able to care for children and provide instruction. Um, they're not allowed to do any of the other items that are check marked in red. Um, so anything in red, they cannot do, which is, you know, the coordinating of curriculum, providing any type of staff development, uh, being a supervisor over anyone, um, even if it is an aide, and definitely not supervising a site or a program. Um, but it tells you there whether somebody can supervise somebody or not, and if they can provide um, any type of uh, higher level services. Um, so as you go up from the chart, you'll see that the program director has 
every level um, they're check marked in green. Um, some of the acronyms that are included in this chart um, are internal codes that we use, but are also known out in the credentialing world. Um, you know, well, someone will say, I have a P12E, and you know, someone may not understand that. That is the site supervisor permit. So this is just giving you a snapshot of what these folks can do. And um, if anybody were to ask, you know, it's a handy dandy tool to give them as well as this is what you can do with your permit. So uh, moving on from that, we also uh, are issuing permits that have a school age emphasis uh, attached to it. Uh, school age emphasis is for somebody that's normally on track to be an elementary ed teacher, or maybe they were going to uh, get into education at the elementary or secondary ed level and had to complete coursework for school age, meaning five and above. Um, not child development zero through five. So we do accept school age emphasis coursework. Some of the permits have an advantage where you only have to complete half of the coursework um, if you met the school age emphasis requirement. So it's meeting part of the coursework with child development units and meeting coursework uh, still having units but with a different age group of students. Um, so that there is a school age emphasis and um, one of the permits, let's say if it required 12 units in child development, if they had six in child development and six in school age emphasis, maybe some education classes that they took for elementary ed or for even secondary ed would count towards this requirement of school age emphasis. Renewal requirements and the validity of the permits, they're good for five years and um, all permits do have renewal requirements. Some of them require professional growth hours and then some of them require uh, units towards a more advanced permit such as the associate, that one can only be renewed once. It requires that 15 semester units of coursework are completed towards the teacher permit. It can be in child development units. It doesn't necessarily need to be child development units because general ed units are also required for the teacher permit, or it could be a mix or match for the uh, 15 units, as long as they are, um, you know, not, not in the non-remedial and that they are C or higher. So that will be the next slide I'm gonna be talking about. So they have to be degree applicable. Um, so somebody earning an associate degree, those courses would need to be applicable towards that. And um, again, they can't be under 100 or non-remedial. And the course grade has to be C or higher or a pass credit is okay as well. And then the important thing is that they have to be completed at a regionally accredited college or university. We have been seeing as of late, a lot of Montessori type of um, programs or certificate programs that are not necessarily attached to an accredited college. And a lot of people um, get turned away. Unfortunately, uh, we're not able to use those credits towards a permit. How do you know about these accrediting bodies? Um, typically in California, it's usually WASC accreditation. Um, there are other accrediting bodies throughout the different states in case somebody did coursework in another state. Um, so it's very important um, that these courses are not through like a diploma mill type of place or a Montessori or um, one of the other that we've been seeing lately. I, I hate to say names of them, so I'm not going to, um, but just make sure that the units are from an accredited 
body, which the community colleges that are represented here today um, are. We also accept foreign degree coursework um, as long as the individual has completed an evaluation through an acceptable agency. So there are many agencies out there, but they have to be approved by the Commission on Teacher Credentialing. There is a list of the most recent uh, agencies. So if anyone completed coursework out of country and it is in child development or even a degree of any other type that can assist them moving forward to get a more advanced degree, we always recommend that they do that. Um, what we do is we provide the list and then from there what they charge, what they require, some of them require original, some of them translations, they're all different. Um, we can't help an individual until that happens until we have the report in hand to be able to guide and recommend what they can do next. Um, there are times that some people have child development coursework out of country, and then of course the degree is gonna do wonders for them. So um, if anybody does have foreign degree coursework, we always uh, ask that they get this done. What is core coursework? You're gonna hear core coursework. The core coursework for child development permits are three particular classes that are a requirement for all of the permits, um, associate and higher, depending on the route that you take. But uh, usually option one will require that you have the three core classes, which are usually the intro, uh, the child growth and development course, the child, family, and community, and a programs or a curriculum course. Um, those are the core courses. For supervised field experience, we get that question a lot. Well, what is that? Is that actual hands-on in the classroom experience? And um, unfortunately, no, it is a course and it is usually classified as a practicum or student teaching or a lab. And it does have to be supervised by staff from a regionally accredited college. And it typically, um, to meet the requirements of a child development permit, it must be three semester units or four quarter units. Um, or more. And then again, like I mentioned before, it can't be actual work experience in the classroom. It has to be a course with courses, uh, semester units or quarter units earned. Um, I've also seen this requirement as an internship um, course, depending on the college. And then if somebody is trying to use school age emphasis, if they were an elementary teacher, and they did student teaching for their program, that can count as well for the supervised field experience class. Monica, if yes. I may go ahead and just um, intervene and ask this question at this point, sure. um, if you can go back first to the first um, uh, one before this, the supervised field experience, um, and uh, the, oh, I'm not supervised, but the um, core classes, Yes. I have a lot of questions, usually on child growth and development. Um, would an infant toddler development also be, um, uh, you know, we usually have traditionally 101 and 175 is our infant toddler development. Will you accept the infant toddler development class for the child growth and development? That's a great question. Um, I have been doing this for over 20 years and I've never seen somebody try to use the other class, I, I would try it. Um, definitely, I always see the child growth and development course. Um, I would definitely try it. It would be the ultimate say uh, for CTC on whether they would accept it. Um, but it sounds like it would be acceptable because it does cover, you know, birth, infancy and all of that um okay. that's a great question i if you want to save that question and i can um 
contact the commission and see if they will accept it if we get an answer and um, get back to you in the field on that. Sure, thank you. And then um, just a, a for the programs and curriculum, so usually for the um, our guests here today, our curriculum classes are 111, 121, and 131 um, here at Miramar College. And so um, that's uh, 111 is music and movement. Uh, secondly, the um, art class is 121. And third, 131 is um, language, science, and math. So my question is, I think that's fairly clear for the curriculum classes. What about programs? What do you mean by programs? Some colleges have like a program planning course. I don't have the titles all in front of me um, and info from all of the colleges, but there are some uh, courses still out there that have programs or program planning in the title specifically yes. in child development or early childhood education. Um, what we mostly see is the curriculum because that's what's out there mainly, but occasionally we will see uh, people, we, we're not gonna turn them away if they have the program planning or any type of programs in um, child development coursework. You may right. not offer them, but I know, you know, statewide or even in other states, there are still some people that are offering those courses. And for our guests at Miramar, that's the 151 program planning, which usually entails at least, we would like you to have all three curriculum classes before you enter that program planning. Um, thank you very much. And um, for the two, for um, the next one, um, these are just a couple of questions um, at Miramar. Uh, the uh, work experience and lab. So the next slide down, um, we offer this as um, uh, the 270 classes, 160, 161, 270, and 291. So um, best place to go would be Reka to talk about the supervised field experience. Thank you, Monica, for um, helping to um, clarify some of those questions. Of course, yes, very good. And also that you're plugging in what courses they are um, there with your students. So that's great. Okay, so some of these permits do require experience depending on the option that you are going to apply under. So when we talk experience, the state is very specific on what they want to see. Um, it either must be on a form, which is a verification of experience form uh, that can be found on the consortium website. Um, there are a few versions of it floating around. Um, what they will accept as well is an official letter on letterhead with an original wet signature. If it's not an original wet signature, they will accept Adobe or DocuSign but they're very specific on this. Um, so um, if they need 50 days minimum experience within the last you know, three years, it has to be verified by one of these ways. Um, some folks will try to use their pay stubs or you know, other things. Unfortunately, we're not able to accept those. Now, family child care experience is honored and accepted um, as long as the individual does have a, a license under the Department of Social Services, even if their license is expired, but the experience was during the validity of the license, it will be ex you know, accepted. And then of course, depending on the um, level that they are applying under, there is certain hours that they must meet. And some people mix and match the family child care experience and the actual experience. Um, so there are forms. Um, one is for a small daycare uh, family child care, and one is for a large family child care uh, home license. And the site supervisor and the program director applicants must hold a large family child care home license in order to uh, use this option. Um, so the next screen I'm going to show you 
the forms. I know they're tiny, um, but pretty much um, the form is there certifying uh, like a self-verification from the daycare home provider indicating the hours of experience they had using that license. And then there's a parent verification form because the parents, a minimum of three parents must verify that this is true. In fact, that the family daycare home provider provided those particular hours. So they would need to obtain uh, letters from, or not letters, forms from the parents to verify this information. A lot of uh, family daycare providers also want to show that they have a permit and that they are educating the littles, the, the kids in their program, and that it's not just, hey, you're just dumping your child at this daycare. They also want to say, hey, I went to school, I'm educated, I'm trained, I also have a child development permit. So we do see a lot of fa family child care uh, homeowners that come and uh, use this route. Monica, there is a question by Elizabeth. Sure. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, sorry. I just have a question about the ex work experiences. Can the, any out-of-state um, experience count towards those hours? I was a director in Arizona, but recently relocated. And so now I'm trying to get like a director permit here in California. So, so Lisa, like, yes, so that. Lisa, your question, I believe I heard because the audio isn't too great in this room and neither is the lighting, but I think you said you have out-of-state Arizona experience and you want to know if you can use those hours towards a permit here in California. The answer is yes. Um, you can use, as long as you use the verification forms, it's not tied to California, the experience. Um, they don't let you use out of country experience, but you can use out of state. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're and welcome. Another Rizbana. And then we'll go yes. on. Yes. Good afternoon. I just have a quick question for the renewal for a site supervisor permit. Um, and I'm a family child care owner. Is that considered part? We can use that as. Um, experience or we have to go another route so you mentioned uh Brisbane renewal for a site supervisor permit so yes. we're going to talk about that uh, okay. in the next few slides and um I'll tell you what you'll okay. need for that sounds good thank you thank you so assistant is the lowest permit this one only requires six semester units in child development or ECE um, also, there uh, is ROP uh, certification that folks, if they earned an ROP certificate, they can bring their certificate um, to our office and apply for the assistant level permit. Um, for these units, it's important to know they don't have to be the core classes. It's any six units, so any two classes, and then these individuals will need 105 hours of professional growth to renew the document. And then the, once they earn this document, it's a paper renewal process. They cannot renew it online. For the associate teacher permit, this one is where you start seeing that the core classes are required and it's 12 semester units total that are required, including those three core classes that we talked about, the curriculum, the child family community, and the child growth development. For option one, you would need the 50 days of experience in the last two years completed uh, on either the letterhead or the form. And Option two, there is still the uh, option if somebody gets a national child development associate uh, credential through CDA, they can submit that, uh, the certificate, and I'll show you one on the next slide. 
um, in order to get the associate teacher permit. Going that route, we would not be looking for the individual units. It would just be the matter of the CDA certification. And then for renewal, for these folks, uh, it's not professional growth. It's they have to complete 15 units towards the, ish, the, the next level. Um, so like I said earlier, it doesn't have to be in child development. It can be general education as well because that's working towards the next permit. And then if somebody, let's say, does not meet the 15 unit requirement to renew this document, they can downgrade to an assistant. Um, Sometimes their jobs will not allow them to continue uh, employment if they have downgraded. Um, unfortunately, we don't get into the employment arena, but that would be their only option um, is to downgrade. Um, now, a lot of people ask, I, you guys ask the question about the child growth development. So we also get the question, well, what about a human development course out of a different department? Or, you know, let's just say human development 101. So we have to ask for course descriptions. And we will advise if we think that it's going to work. Um, again, the state makes the final decision on these documents, so we don't have the final say. But let me show you the CDA credential. So somebody coming in, we would need to see their original CDA credential, and that's how they would qualify for the associate teacher permit along with the fingerprinting and the forms and such, but we would not need transcripts for these individuals. So here's a screenshot of one. The next level is teacher. Now for teacher, uh, we're jumping now from 12 units to 24 units. So also including those core classes. So with those core classes, a total of 24 units. And then that's where the general ed comes in. They have to hold 16 semester units in general education. And that goes back to what I started the presentation with on see or higher, it has to go towards a degree and all of those things, but I'm just reminding you. And then this option, the first one, option one, requires actual class experience, 175 days. And then the, the next option, which people will ask, well, can I mix and match? So let's say somebody has an associate degree in child development, but they didn't have the supervised field experience course that's required for option two. Then they'll turn around and say, well, I have the degree in child development. I don't have the course for supervised field experience, but I have the 175 days of experience. We cannot mix and match, unfortunately. So either you have to qualify based on option one or based on option two. Hopefully that makes sense. So um, I said some of these things um, earlier, but I will reiterate them. So for the ECE child development units, they cannot be used to meet the general ed requirements. That one I did not say earlier, but people will try to say, well, I'm gonna use this class. It's a general ed class, but it can also fit in to child development class. You can't double dip. So. I'll just use an example, um, American Sign Language. Somebody's trying to use American Sign Language as a general ed course, and they're also trying to say that it's a curriculums, a curriculum course for child development. It really isn't, but people try to do it all the time and mix and match, you can't do that or they took a music class and they said that it involved children, it's out of the music department and they're trying to double dip. Some of these classes, it has to go one way or the other. Um, for the supervised field experience, if someone has two units, um, I've seen it happen before if the college writes a letter from their department chair and explains that maybe it was only two units there, but they had a lab or they had another component and another course. 
um, that they will usually accept that. Um, quarter units, we have a semester unit converter in our credential information guide um, for most folks that are in the credentialing world. Um, but most of the classes that I'm seeing are usually in semester units, um, unless somebody's going to a four-year college or university. So I wouldn't worry so much about that. But if you had questions on that, we could always talk about it. Um, for the teacher permit, the only way to renew that document is 105 hours of professional growth. Now, if somebody's still going to school to earn more units, they don't necessarily have to renew the permit if they qualify for another higher level permit, unless they are just doing the coursework and say, well, I don't ever wanna be a site supervisor. I don't ever wanna do that. I always encourage people to go for the highest level permit and they can work in the capacity of anything underneath it. But there are some people that just don't want to obtain something higher or maybe they're getting some type of funding or grant. Um, they wanna you know, make sure that they're getting the monies and, and some of them do upgrade for that particular reason. Um, so it just depends on the individual. We can only guide and, and suggest. For the master teacher, it's the very same requirements as teacher. The only exception is that they also need a specialization in one area and they need the adult supervision class. So the same thing for teacher, the 24 units with the core classes, the 16 units in general ed in the specific areas, you must have one class in every area, and then six semester units in one area of specialization. The most popular one that we see is infant toddler. So what does that look like? It would be two courses in the infant toddler area. Um, and then for the adult supervision, that one is two semester units. It's a bonus if they have more. And in addition, they also require that 350 days of experience um, in the class. So that's option one. Option two, if somebody has a bachelor's degree or higher, and it can be in anything, it does not have to be in child development, then they're only looking for half of the units in child development. They're only looking for 12 semester units and they are uh, gonna be looking for the supervised field experience class, the practicum, the lab, the internship, the student teaching. So the difference again is the six additional semester units that have to focus in one particular area. There's so many different areas. Um, I mentioned the infant toddler, but there's many more. And there's a form that is required for the specialization that has to be completed where the educator will indicate what their specialization is. I have seen some educators that have multiple areas of specialization and that's okay. Um, and they're welcome to put them all down, but they're only looking for one. Um, we have some overachievers that take a lot of classes, every class known to man in child development. So they are some educators that have more than one specialization. For the adult supervision, um, also known as the mentoring class, um, some colleges call it, um, that is typically two semester units. Um, I've seen more, but it's typically two. And it has to be in the child development, early childhood ed department. Um, there's other colleges that have these type of classes that are not specific to child development and early childhood ed. So if you see a mentoring class, it doesn't mean that it's in child development unless it's from that department or you receive a letter indicating that it is. Site supervisor, that is uh, the second to the highest permit. And this one, um, someone can have an associate degree or be very close to an associate degree for option one, if they have 60 semester units or more. Um, but if they have their associate degree, 
as well. It can be in anything. It does not have to be in child development. Um, this one is the same as the teacher. They have to have the 24 units in child development with the core classes and uh, six units or more in administration and supervision. And uh, here along is the adult supervision class that is usually two units. And they must have not only uh, experience with the children, but they also have to have experience supervising adults, at least 100 days supervising adults under option one. So for option two, if they have a bachelor's degree, it's the same requirement as master teacher, the 12 units in child development. It can be any 12 units. It doesn't have to be the core units and then the field experience course. So a lot of people will say, well, I don't want the site supervisor because I don't ever want to supervise. So they'll do option two for master teacher, but it's up to the educator what they want to do. So for the administration and supervision units, it has to be six units. It can't be under six units or the state won't honor it. One course must be introductory level and the other one is advanced. And then typically the content will include um, administration, management, supervision uh, within the child care and development program. So some people will have administration or supervision classes as well, but they're not in child development. So it's very important that the content is with child care and uh, development program. When they say experience supervising adults, um, that's a requirement for site supervisor under option one. They'll say, well, who, you know, what's the definition? definition of supervising adults. So I say it can be supervising teachers, assistant teachers, even parent volunteers that you have overseen. So that would meet the requirement. And then it has to be the 100 days uh, of supervising adults. So if somebody is using a letter versus the form, just make sure that the letter does say 100 days supervising adults and a minimum of three hours a day. Now for the option three and four, this is typically for um, people that have other type of credentials, they must hold another credential. So option three, SC1A, that means an administrative services credential. This is a person that is a principal. This is a person that has gone through a program uh, and is trained in, in administration to be a principal or vice principal. So typically these are people that have, you know, bachelor's or higher degrees. Um, they're only required to meet half of the units in child development, but they are still required to do the field experience course. Option four is the same, an elementary teacher or a secondary a single subject a teacher credential holder that has a home economics credential authorization. If they have 12 units of child development on the field experience, then they're able to um, meet the site supervisor uh, requirement. Program director, this is the highest level and um, they all must have a bachelor's degree. There's not another option. Um, so the first option is bachelor's degree. And then again, 24 units in child development with the core classes. And they as well have to have the administration and supervision units and the adult supervision um, course. In addition, they need one year. So site supervisor, you needed 100 days of uh, supervising adults. This one is a year as a site supervisor. So that does need to be verified. And then for option two, again, is the administrative services credential, the 12 units and the field experience. And then, uh, the elementary ed teaching credentials we indicated 
earlier, uh, that option or the single subject in home at credential holder uh, with the 12 units on the field experience again and the, the same admin units. Now, if somebody has a master's degree in early childhood education um, or child development, we don't look for core classes. We don't look for administration classes. We don't look for supervised field experience. All we look for is a master's degree on transcripts in early childhood or child development. We don't look for general ed. We don't look for anything. This is like a slam dunk master's degree in child development. So this is a pretty easy peasy. Um, typically we like individuals to tell us what option they're qualifying under, but sometimes it's pretty evident. Oh, you have a master's degree in child development, but we'll ask, how are you trying to qualify for this permit? You tell us, you know, how are you qualifying? For all the permits that we indicated that require professional growth activities in order for them to be renewed, um, it's the five-year document that they're holding, like I said before, and they are required to do professional growth hours. So um, they have to have a professional growth advisor. There is a manual out there um, that helps with what activities count for what. And it's usually just whatever's making them be a better educator, anything that is helping you grow. And um, we are not professional growth advisors at the county. Um, typically it is uh, your site supervisor or someone with a teacher level or higher permit that has three years experience. So usually it's a colleague, usually it's your site supervisor or your director. And um, there are different categories that you have to indicate. So if you did something, let's say you went to a workshop um, such as this, um, or you went to the zoo or something educational, um, you would choose, or even CPR is number 11, uh, you would choose that category on your log. Now, they let you self-certify under oath, you can say, yes, I did the 105 hours. Yes, I did it. If they decide to audit you after you renew and they pick your name, however they do it, at that time, you would need to come up and provide with the supporting documentation signed by your advisor, but we don't require it up front. Um, so it's kind of on an honor system. Um, every so often they will audit and uh, reach out to you. So what do you do to apply? Um, you can apply through our County Office of Education. Um, you can apply directly to the state of California. We recommend that you apply through our office um, because it does um, go smoother and we're able to be that second eye for you uh, before it gets up to the state. Um, sometimes when people apply directly to the state, it gets rejected. Um, and then since we do it all the time, we, we typically can tell whether or not they'll accept it or not. And then in addition to that, we have the legal authority to issue you a receipt or a temporary uh, for your employer. So uh, what is required and what's the process? Um, it's gonna be a $100 money order or cashier's check for the application fee. We'll talk about the consortium in the next slide that um, helps with the funding, but it's $100 if you're gonna be paying for it on your own. And then the application form uh, 41-4, fingerprinting is required. It's done electronically through live scan and the form required for this process is a 41 LS form, which is uh, DOJ and FBI prints that are uh, for the commission on teacher credentialing for the purpose of obtaining a permit. So that's very important. People will say, well, I, you know, fingerprinted to be a notary or I fingerprinted to work at the district or whatever it is. Those are separate prints. These prints are for the permit and solely for the permit. We require official transcripts. We uh, must see the originals. They can be open as long as they're on the college paper with a stamp, seal, or embossment. 
We do accept electronic transcripts directly from the college to our office. And then verification of experience, depending on the permit or the route that you are applying under, it may or may not be required. And then in addition, clearinghouse fingerprints, if it's for a school district, they will typically want you to have that. Um, but if it's not for a school district and it's for a private or someone that's not tied to a district, then you wouldn't need those fingerprints. More than likely, you would need their form to get employment fingerprints. And then the temporary county certificate um, is the receipt. Um, it can also be um, activated if somebody has a certificate of clearance or is upgrading from a current valid document to a higher level document. Um, so we do issue something, uh, you walk away with something from our office. As far as the funding, uh, that would waive the $100. Um, at this time, the consortium does have monies and funding is on a first come first serve basis. So we will continue to send applications through the consortium. Uh, we do ask that educators come in with the paperwork. We don't have the ability to be printing out these forms. Um, so currently they're paying the $100 fee for all levels. Um, and they will reimburse for partial funds of the fingerprinting um, if it's a first initial permit. Um, so we do ask that those forms uh, come in with the educator at the time when they come apply. Now for the electronic transcripts, if they are going to go through the County Office of Education through one of our offices, um, we ask that the transcripts come to us as well. A lot of people will say, well, I sent the transcripts to the consortium, but if we are processing something, unfortunately, we have to make sure that the educator is academically eligible for the permit. So we do have to see originals as well for our own policies and procedures and processes. So uh, again, the consortium does offer um, to pay for the permits, for the reimbursements. Um, they also have different types of programs. Um, from my understanding, they assist as well with professional growth advisors and course lookup. Um, so there's a link there for them and their phone number and their email. And then, um, Typically, if they run out of funds, they'll send a letter in the mail stating, we received this, we have no more funding, you'll have to resubmit with the $100. Um, but they also post on their website, and we're always checking the website, any updates and changes to the funding. And we have a good working relationship with them where they'll reach out to us and tell us, hey, don't send any more because we're out of funds. So just a note for you guys. What is needed when somebody is upgrading? So somebody that has a valid permit that hasn't been expired for over 18 months, it is a paper application. Um, and again, all the academic qualifications have to be submitted. So we won't go over every permit, but anyone upgrading, they're gonna need transcripts to show what new coursework they have done. And um, some of the permits indicate that if they do it within the three years of the permit date issuance date that they only have to pay half of the fee. If the document doesn't say that, then unfortunately they can't come in with just a $50 money order. But if the document is within the time frame and it does indicate that, then they would be coming in with a money order, cashier's check of the $50 or the consortium forms if the consortium was going to be paying for it and then the application form and again, transcripts and if needed, the experience and the other fingerprinting if it were gonna be for a school district. So what happens when they can't upgrade or they can't renew online because they haven't met renewal requirements? So that's where extensions come in. So extensions are very rarely done, but they are done. Um, for folks um, requesting a two-year extension, 
because they didn't meet the professional growth hours. So this can be somebody that left the field possibly to raise children, or maybe they um, you know, just left the field to do something else or left the country. Um, and they just didn't do the professional growth activities. So we ask that people use this route wisely because it's a once in a lifetime thing. An associate teacher doesn't qualify for the two-year extension. They can um, possibly ask for a different extension, um, which we'll talk about further. But um, pretty much what the educator would need to provide is just a letter saying, I'm requesting my once in a lifetime two-year extension um, for my professional growth hours. And then during those two years, that educator would then do their hours of experience. And once they've earned them, then they can go back and renew it. Um, just a note, so if they took a three semester unit course, um, let's say they're taking coursework to try to you know, get it out of the way quicker within those two years, uh, three semester units equal 45 hours. So just so you know that, and some of you may already know that. Um, so the medical appeal, this is for any level. Um, there are um, reasons, uh, different reasons, you know, whether somebody had to deal with uh, care of a family member, a death of a family member due to illness, um, or their own health, maybe they had cancer, chemo treatment, uh, back surgery, just about any kind of um, health issue. If they can obtain a letter from their um, doctor indicating that they were under their care, in addition to uh, providing their own letter explaining the reasons they didn't meet the renewal requirements. Um, so a doctor's letter, any supporting documentation, if they are taking care of a family member um, because they're a primary caretaker, they also need a letter from that individual's doctor. So let's say I was taking care of my son or my husband, I would need a letter from their doctor. A lot of people don't like to share the medical stuff, but unfortunately for this type of extension, it is required. The other type of extension is just failure to do it. Um, no attempt to do it. Um, usually we see this for associate teacher um, when they have to use, earn the 15 units towards the next level. Um, so they would need to write a letter indicating why they didn't uh, do the units um, or the coursework. Um, I know during COVID, some of the coursework wasn't available. We're a little bit past that, but you know it is a five-year document, so it did it did impact people. Um, and then the other thing is if they got a letter from their college or university indicating that coursework was not available during the uh, time period to fulfill their renewal requirements. So again, it doesn't have to be in early childhood ed, the coursework that they're, they're doing. People are fixated on oh, the units have to be in child development. No, they do not. They can be child development and general education or you know, pick one or the other or mix and match. So where do you turn your packet in? Um, mainly, um, some people do it via US mail to our office. A lot of people want to do it in person to make sure all their I's, T's, everything's dotted, crossed, and that we double check everything. Um, so we do have walk-in hours at our San Diego location. San Marcos, we have a facility as well. Currently, um, we're a little bit more limited in San Marcos. Today, um, Monday, is a walk-in day for San Marcos. And we're working on, on another walk-in day because the, this office does fingerprinting and credentialing. Um, we are a lot more limited and, and the wait can be longer. Um, but if they have to come here, you know, it, 
they just need to check the website because there's also days that we have staff development or workshops or presentations like I'm doing here with you guys today. So always check the website for the San Marcos, the San Diego office, there'll be some one there all the time. And then just note that they close the gates at 3.30. It's like a big wrought iron fence around our facility and they will not let anybody in if they arrive after 3.30. For the resources and for more information, the child development permit leaflet is available as well as the, um, some people call it matrix, some people call it the worksheet. There is a, a guide out there for the general ed coursework and the child development coursework. And then our other resource is our own website, the County Office of Ed website and the CTC website. And then for our office, we have um, technicians and fingerprinting. Uh, we have fingerprinting at our San Diego and San Marcos location. Our general phone number and our general email is listed there and um, our website. So forms, information, everything can be found there. Um, but if you still need assistance, you can be directed to our number and website there. Now I added a different slide because it's a hot topic. Um, I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but a lot of people have been asking about TK and um, pretty much some people are confusing the child development permit with the TK authorization or the TK credential. So, just so you know, TK is kindergarten. That's the bottom line, it's kindergarten. What is required for kindergarten is that somebody have an elementary education teaching credential, uh, also known as a multiple subject teaching credential. So a child development permit, although there are some private preschools that allow their own teachers to teach per se, kindergarten in their school um, for public school for the purposes that we're using today it's a different credential um, right now they're coming up with uh, programs to earn an early childhood uh, credential not specifically in special ed but one that will um, expand from just child development to also um, teaching elementary grade uh, TK. So there's different options right now. If somebody does have a site supervisor permit um, and does have units in, in child development, there's an emergency type of document that is only initiated by an employer um, that will allow them to obtain this type of emergency document. So I just added that. Um, I don't want to add more confusion, but if you want more information on that, you can also reach out. At this time, we're gonna ask uh, the field if they have any more questions. So um, if you have any more questions in the chat, you're welcome to read them to me and then I will answer them. So Monica, um, before we go into questions, I believe that our workshop is from 1230 to 130. Is that correct, Donna? Okay, so for the sake of um, uh, meeting your deadline, I know we're a little bit over, but um, you're welcome to stay. Thank you so much, Monica, for the time, and we hope that you can entertain um entertain a couple more uh, questions afterwards, but there are a couple of things that we want to make sure that we announce beforehand. And one, before you log off, if you could please, um, and uh, Donna, could you share the um, link or the chat? Um, in your chat, you will see that there is a, um, uh, there is, um, a survey that we would like you to go ahead and um, give us some feedback 
on the child development um, workshop that you heard today. If you want more, um, we would love to go ahead and host these, um, uh, these workshops. And secondly, again, on the chat, there is a link here for uh, any questions um, to uh, Reka Chabra or our Miramar Child Development Program. It's, it's um, available there. And then also I'd like to go ahead and share the screen. Um, there are other workshops that uh, we will be hosting. Um, tomorrow is for mostly our students who are going into their child development uh, department and the following um, for child development pathways. If you wanna know basically what um, Monica has talked about um, this, this morning or this afternoon, we'd like to follow it up with our classes that fits very well in um you know in there then lastly but certainly not least um we want to make sure that we announce um our triple e or educational um early ed, ed early education um, entrepreneurship, which is a new program. And uh, as you can also see from here, um, or uh, in here, Tanya or Angela, would you like to talk a little bit about it? I know we're, we're kind of over on time, so I won't spend a lot of time. I'll just tell everybody, uh, come to the workshops. Uh, if you're interested in learning about the business aspect of child development, that's what we're we're uh, building, and that's what we're um, creating more and more and more about. So come to the upcoming workshops. We'll tell you all about it. But right now, I, I don't want to take any more of your, of your <laughs> time, and I, want, I know people have so many questions for Monica, so that's all I'll say on my side. <laughs> okay, very good. From our team, any other announcements? Otherwise, we'll go straight to Monica and uh, Donna, I think if you can um, ask some questions um, from the chat, we'll entertain that and then entertain other hands that are up. Sure, sure. Okay, so one of them, Monica, was um, were the form CL878877 on that website that you provided? They should be on the website. Um, I don't know if when you did the invite, if you included my personal email, um, I'm more than happy to share it if somebody cannot find the forms. Okay. Um, so my email to all of you is M as in Monica, and then my last name, Robinson, at S for San, D for Diego, C for County, O for Oscar, E for education.net, S-D-C-O-E.net. Yep, perfect. Thank okay. you, Tanya. You're awesome. So yeah. if you cannot locate those forms, I would be more than happy to send them out to you. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, other question was, um, how about a master's degree in human development for the program director? I have seen it work before. We can attempt it. They're very specific on early childhood ed and child development, but I have seen it in my career a few times that it has been accepted. Okay. Thank you, Monica. Mm -hmm. And then somebody was asking for personal advice at the end. I guess that depends on time. And then now it's just hands. Anybody who has their hands up? I think Reka had her hand up. Hi, Monica. Thank you for this fabulous information. You know, we all need it. And I know, I know I've been working with the students on the permits. I still have a couple of questions if I, if, if you may have time to answer it. One yes. is, uh, when they receive their temporary and if they get flagged, right, they, that they lack this or this information was correct or they lack this thing when it comes from the state, at that time, during that period, when they are in the process of correcting that deficiency, is their temporary permit is still valid? Yes, there is an ed code that states, I don't have it at the top of my brain right now, but there's an education code that indicates that the temporary is still intact until the CTC exceeds the 60 days or if they don't follow up and um, you know submit whatever it is that at that time it is invalidated. Um, so we do not invalidate anything. It's still business as usual. They still hold the document unless 
you know, they don't come up with what they need within the 60 days. So EDCO does say that the receipt, the temporary still stands for that level permit. Perfect, thank you. Um, I have another question, which is about the double dipping. Thank you for clarifying that piece for our students. Um, um, double dipping, when it comes to that, I wanted to ask you, our associates degree already have sometimes, you know, those supervised field experience units that we are looking for. Will that be considered if they have done their associates and it's part of it, it's not a double dipping, is it? It's not a double dipping. You would be surprised how many people have associate uh, degree or even a bachelor's degree that never did a practicum or student teaching or a lab or any work experience. You would be surprised how many do not have it. And at that time, we have to tell them you need to go take that class um, if it's not posted, you know. So, yes, there, that's not considered double dipping. <laughs> Thank I, I have a couple of more, but I want to give platform to other people first, uh, Professor Rubek, and be mindful to the time. For, for yes, um, I know Lenora had a question before. Could you? Would you like to go ahead? Oh hi, yes, please. I just was wondering um, to take if you take that supervised field experience class, isn't that like? full-time during the day and if you're already in a full-time job how do you do it yeah and fortunately you know for student teaching type of courses for elementary ed teachers secondary ed as well as for this particular course my understanding is that it is during work hours um i don't know if any of the programs out there have evening mm. but that would be a call a college question on what's available my understanding it's only during business hours well That's i worked for i'm sorry i, I work, thank you i work for san diego unified school district and i um I, i'm one of those people that monica said, got confused i thought i was in a zoom with you guys to talk about the ece teacher permit the TK permit basically is what I'm interested in. And so I took uh, like nine units as soon as I heard about that. And um, I think I need three more and I have a couple of elementary school classes that I thought might be usable, but um, I don't know. I guess I'll have to talk to San Diego Unified and find if, out if there's any way I can Get the You're welcome to email me, um, Ms. Chavez, on what you have. And, you know, maybe if you want to scan me your transcripts, I don't advise everyone on the Zoom to do this, but I'm just saying um, we do it on a case by case scenario. And typically our, our process is if you're going to be applying for something that we do the evaluation and we look at it. But it sounds like you're an employee. I don't know if you have an elementary credential or not. No, I just have a bachelor's and a substitute teacher permit, but I work full time as a paraeducator. Yeah, so. and fortunately, that requirement does have to be met, and it's a loss of time and a loss of wages, and it's just the way it is. Um, I'm not a college, so I can't, you know, advocate for another way. <laughs> well, yeah. I can take I can take the course in the summer. So in um, so uh, Lenora, let me answer it from the college level. Um, we have the course 270, which is a work experience. And actually, um, you know, to get the three units, uh, I don't I there's a number of hours, more than 150 hours, I believe. And so um, to get the three units, you can enroll at any of our community college or here at um, at Miramar, we have one that's going on on the 12 weeks, um, and you have to be in a center for um, uh, children, um, you know, birth of five, right, um, pretty much to be able, and, and if you're working there already, then that's not a problem, but yes, there's a number of hours per semester that you would have to complete to do the work experience, the lab experience, you know, either at your place of work or somewhere in the community or at the Miramar Child Development Center. We welcome you, but that is a loss of time. 
um, so from your regular work. So I hope that I finish uh, that I was able to answer that question for you. You can um, actually Kyoka Hashimoto, who's here, part of our Triple E team. Um, if you can go ahead and put your um, uh, email as well as mine, and um, uh, Kyoka, so that you can contact us for more information about that. So um, we'll go ahead, and uh, I see two more. Um, uh, questions, um, hands here. So we'll go with Ansari Arhat first and then Jacqueline. Oh, hi, my name is Farhat Ansari and uh, I have done a bachelor's degree from a different country. I have 90 units and I've also done early childhood education and have 30 units. So do I qualify for associate's teacher permit or teacher permit or none? You may qualify for as high as teacher. Um, you would need to obtain the foreign transcript evaluation from one of the agencies that yes, are... I have it ready. I have the official transcript. I have the open one. And I have been working in the San Diego Unified School District for the past six years. So is it one from the agencies that are acceptable? What's the name of the agency? Yes, uh... One is ACER, and I think one more I have done two, two times. So I have it, everything is in order. It sounds like that agency uh, is recognized. I would need to um, see it and verify because unfortunately, some of them use the same acronyms. Who would have thought? Um, so I have told people in the past, yeah, that should work. And then they come in with one and the acronym, acronym no, no, no. is exactly no, no, the same. I, I, I committed all of these. <laughs> I did the evaluation and then that's how I'm working in the school district, in the San Diego school district. So I will send you an official one also and I will I have yeah, all come, of it. Come knowledge. and see us. Come and see us with all your supporting documentation. Um, and then if you do have the child development units, um, it would probably, if you don't have the core classes required for teacher, you know, or even associate teacher that where that may be where your hiccup is. I don't know if you've been evaluated before, but um, come and see us. Our office hours in San Diego are eight to 3.30. Uh, we're open during lunch. They will not allow anyone in the gate after 3.30. No, they say I have to do some classes. Like uh, they said, I have to take some classes and maybe curriculum or history or mathematics or maybe those three semesters of supervised field at work. So this is the That's answer. possible. I would be happy to look at it as well. Um, all our technicians at the county are trained um, mm -hmm. and are going on the same requirements. I would be more than happy to look at it as well. Okay. Um, you have my email, so yes. we'll go from there, okay? Thank you. Professor Rubik, you're, you're muted. I'm so sorry. Thank you again. I'm sorry for your question. Um, uh, what I would like to do before Jacqueline is to look at your chat, look at the child development workshop survey. And if in particular, you want to learn more about the pre um, the pre K to um, credential to eight um, or to third grade, please um, put it in your survey. And um, at the end of the semester, we do a little raffle with those who have um, uh, done the survey for us. Our next question will come from Jacqueline. Thank you. Hi, so actually I have uh, two questions. <laughs> um, so I have the size supervisor permit and then it might be a good idea that she was saying, uh, the other person was saying that she can provide an email. So like probably she can go over it because like that's it's a whole different situation. <laughs> and um, so my main question is, um, so there are basically two. One, um, I would like to upgrade from site supervisor to the uh, higher one. Um, I hold a bachelor's degree. And um, so it's just a matter of looking into which requirements I meet. And then I just wanted to like know that. And uh, my second question would be um, if my bachelor stands that um, I'm able to 
to uh, do uh, kindergarten. That's what the bachelor says, um, but I don't have any credentials. How would that work? Okay, so the first question was about your current permit and your degree. Um, that's what my understanding was as far as the permit. Correct. Uh huh. So um, you said your bachelor's degree is from another country. Um, I would need to see what the equivalent is. The bachelor is from Ohio. It's, it's from here. It's not from another country. Oh, my, my apologies. From Ohio, another state. Uh -huh. And it's in child development or elementary education? Yes. Uh, no, it's a, it's a, the title, it's a child development and adolescence. And um, it's a course that they uh, partnered up with Mesa College. And then they were teaching, it was an, an accelerate um, uh, okay. course that, yeah. So just with that being said, and not looking at anything, it sounds like to upgrade to the next level, what you're wishing to do is that you probably met all the academic requirements. You would just need the additional uh, supervising adults, the 100 days of supervising adults. Um, I would need to look at everything to, to tell you, but based on that, it, it sounds like that. And then as far as um, your other question, um, for, for, sorry to me, interrupt. The, for the first question, um, I'm actually an assistant site supervisor. And then so obviously once the site supervisor is not on site, I'm in charge of, and it's been uh, three years that I've been on this position. So probably that would account. Um, you're, you're still supervising, but it has to be verified for the, I think it's a hundred days. I don't have it in front of me. Um, it sounds like it may work. I mean, you can send me a, a separate email and then for the upgrade, you know, you would have to prove the, the supervision hours because it sounds like academically you have those. And then for the TK, the reason you can't do that is because you did not do an elementary education program. You said you did a bachelor's in child development program. If you're interested in obtaining the elementary ed or the new uh, credential that they're coming out with, you know, we can give you information on that um, if you email me. Do you mind if you repeat your email one more time? And thank you for your patience. I know there's a lot of questions. I try to be fast and, and quick so you can understand. But yeah, if you can repeat your question, I'll email you for sure. Yeah, Jacqueline, um, just to, uh, it is on the chat. Um, and we will um, put it again. So Donna, if you could copy and paste it. So it's at the bottom of the chat. Um, you can find it there, Jacqueline. It's a funsory. Can, can you see it? Can. If you click on the chat. Yeah, I'm on the it's, chat, but there are yeah. several emails. M. Robinson at SDC. Um, SDCOE.net. Mm -hmm. Right. Got it. Yeah, it's uh, there are several emails on the chat though. <laughs> yes, I oh, thank you. Got it. You're well. Yep. You're very welcome. And just so that people who are still here, um, thank you so much for um, still being here. Um, the first bat. The first. Um, point, I think, is to go to Monica Robinson. And once you know what you're eligible for, what your um, degree and uh, uh, will be eligible for as far as the permits, um, please go to Monica Robinson. Um, she will uh, direct you. And then if you still need classes, then please um, uh, uh, come to us at the college at Miramar College, and you can contact me directly, any of our team, Reka and Kioka. And again, um, for our, our um, guests here, Reka and Kioka, if you can just copy it down again, um, that way it's right at the very bottom of the chat. That would be great. Uh, there is a question from Sarah Sanders. And it says, will you please explain why some people receive a temporary permit without an expiration date? Some temporary permits do have expiration dates. What is the difference and how do we obtain the temporary 
for work while we wait for the permit? So um, pretty much there's a law that um, only allows us to issue a real temporary. The temporary is a receipt as well, but an activated temporary is that the educator must possess a certificate of clearance. A certificate of clearance is an extra document that has to be applied for online at the CTC website that coincides with the fingerprinting done for the Commission on Teacher Credentialing. So the law says that county offices cannot provide a temporary if they do not hold a valid document or a valid certificate of clearance. So that's why there's no dates there. Most preschools are not uh, part of a public school system, nor they are uh, tied to our payroll system. Um, and they just use the receipt if CDE uh, audits them. Um, that's the reason for the dates not being there. The person doesn't have a valid document or a certificate of clearance. If someone is adamant that they want dates on there, then we tell them, well, unfortunately you have to pay for the certificate of clearance and it has to be issued and granted in order for us to put dates on there. I know it's a very confusing and convoluted issue, but it's what Ed Code states that we cannot do. Okay, and Kyoka, I know you had some questions. Right, um, I have one here. Um, can I upgrade a permit anytime I want or is there a specific time frame that I can upgrade the permit? For example, if I achieve achieved uh, the teacher permit and kept taking classes to upgrade my permit to master teacher, could I apply for upgrading to the up master teacher permit while working as a teacher once I completed the requirements? So anybody can upgrade at any time. Um, so let's say they just got their permit, uh, you know, January of 23, but in the summer they finish more coursework uh, to upgrade to the next level. They don't have to wait until the other one expires. They don't have to wait the five years. There's not any date. If, if you are academically eligible for the document you and have met requirements, whether it's unit requirements, experience requirements, it can be done at any time. Uh, and Okay, and a follow up is how much more dollar is the certificate of clearance? Sorry, going the back. Cert the certificate of clearance online is $50 and it's a $2.65 charge. Uh, credit card charge. So total $52.65. I don't see any more hands and um uh, and, yeah and, and I have to go I'm being called into another meeting okay. sorry <laughs> well um so uh in ending with this Monica thank you so much this is a very popular um uh, workshop and we're hoping to maybe in the future um do specifically the um preschool uh, to third third grade credential um, at, uh, at during the spring semester. So we'll look at our surveys. Um, for the rest of you, uh, our, our team um, will stay for just a little bit longer. So if there's anyone else who has any questions, please, um, we will say thank you again, Monica. Uh, yes, thank you for having time. me. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. I'll be in touch, Thanks. Monica. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Take care, everybody.